All right, um, it's just about time. Let's get started. Um, my name is Kashyap Chamruti. I am a virtualization and OpenStack contributor um, at Red Hat, <coughs> working in the OpenStack engineering team. Today, I'm going to talk um, a little bit about what kind of debugging mechanisms are available to troubleshoot virtualization drivers in OpenStack. Primarily, we'll focus on libvirt and QMU, which are the default open source drivers in OpenStack. First, let's see why. Um, in, a, in, a, in a typical um, OpenStack environment, which is not a proof of concept, um, you typically have more than um, two compute nodes, multiple libvirt daemons involved, multiple QMU instances involved. So to troubleshoot um, this kind of setup, it can become cumbersome when you don't have effective tools in place, or this, if you're not doing it in a systematic manner, it can be overwhelming. So, and for instance, when you have a complex operations like live migration, it's, it's, it, it can be difficult to track down or pinpoint where exactly is the root cause. Um, when you're doing operations like live migration, you have multiple compute nodes, multiple QMU instances involved. So if you want to track interactions, you need to have certain tools in place. So we'll see um, this kind of, um, what kind of tools um, we have at our disposal to troubleshoot these things and also some of the log patterns that you can find with tools that LibVirt has to offer. <coughs> what kind of bugs? Um, for instance, you have th th these are these kind the, the thing that you're seeing on the slide, they're not really specific to OpenStack. Um, they, they, they're, you can see them in all kinds of environments. Heisen bugs, the notorious bugs that are only replica, that only occur when um, they're not typically easily reproducible because when you try to reproduce or try to debug at a certain level, they just you can't just replicate the bug. <coughs> For instance, um, in OpenStack, and the, the number that the bug that you see there, it's 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 just an example that that's just not replicable in in an, in an environment outside of OpenStack um, CI. And so, and bugs introduced by load. Um, OpenStack CI infrastructure runs about 800 test jobs per hour, so you can imagine what kind of load that's generated. Um, and subtle issues that are hard to track down. There's plenty more. So Nova, I mean, you know, we are at the OpenStack Summit. I'm sure you must have heard enough about OpenStack Nova already. So just a quick overview that it, it runs your compute workloads, runs um, tells uh, schedules, um, Nova, Nova instances, interacts with underlying virtualization drivers, let it be KVM, QMU, Xen, Parallels, um, VMware, many of them. So the, the thing that you see there, it's just what kind of um, virtualization that's supported. Um, you can specify with the word type um, configuration <coughs> in uh, Nova's configuration file. So what else we've got? All these things are available, and uh, slides are posted uh, online, so you don't really have to click pictures if, I mean, j just noting it. But still, you can go ahead if you really want to, if you insist. <coughs> so some of the KVM um, virtualization building blocks. Um, so I'm sure how many are KVM, um, are aware of KVM um, and QMU? OK, it's just about all of the room. <laughs> um, so I, I think I can skip this, but yeah, just um, um, KVM is the kernel module that's um, part of Linux kernel, um, that's a um, popular virtualization mechanism, and QMU that does all the device emulation, your disk, sound, PCI, etc. So, and it supports about 17 CPU architectures. Um, I was reading about it recently. Um, and the commands you see there, that will just enumerate all what kinds of devices uh, QMU supports, what kinds of CPU uh, architectures it emulates. So you can, um, it, 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 there's a, the, the command line is really crazy. I mean, I don't, I don't have it handy here, but if you do a PS um, on your compute host and then grab for the QMU process, you'll just see the monstrous <laughs> command line. <coughs> and and libvirt, um, which is the hypervisor agnostic virtualization library, that interacts um, with QMU via two mechanisms. One is the command line uh, arguments, and the other is um, the QMP interface, and it's called QMU machine protocol. 
So two mechanisms through which libbird interacts um, with QMU. And these are the watch uh, default word drivers in OpenStack Nova. Yeah, this is just a silly um, small ASCII diagram that just uh, shows what we've just saw. KVM, you can see slash dev slash KVM character device that um, is part of the kernel that you can just do a file if you want to check KVM is present or not. Quickest way to is to do file slash dev slash KVM. You should get an output saying it's a character special device. <coughs> And QMU, um, your guest runs as part of QMU process. So QMU is just another, another um, U, uh, process on the host, so like your Firefox or, or Nautilus or any of the tools that you use, um, any of the user space processes on your host. <coughs> and on the top right, uh, you see libguestfs. That's another versatile tool that will allow you to um, rescue disk images, inspect um, disk images, when, say for instance, if your guest dies due to some kind of SLNX problem, you can fire up the guest office to examine the guest and fix the problems. And, and it also has a wide range of virtualization tools, so I highly recommend it if you haven't um, checked it out yet. Yeah, let's see um, uh, what, what utilities are available to debug um, the compute uh, process in Nova. <coughs> Yeah, no, no, I, I'm not showing all the uh, all the Nova services there. Can, Nova has plenty of services. So API from uh, through which you get the call. AMQP is the protocol that's that's used to communicate across uh, services in in OpenStack and compute. Nova compute process interacts with the underlying virtualization driver through the word driver interface, and um, libvirt is the tool there. And libvirt interacts with QMU with the QMU machine protocol. <coughs> So that's just in a small, um, in, in a nutshell. There's lots of different tools that um, um, that that are at our disposal to do um, to troubleshoot virtual machines. For instance, Nova, like any other, um, like you could expect in a typical op environment, uh, OpenStack environment, it offers um, your debug error messages um, when you when you l check the Nova compute logs or API logs. So that's just, uh, you can get those things via enabling the debug and verbose flags um, in, in, in your configuration file. But they're too verbose to find any, um, any meaningful detail if you're, if you're trying to investigate uh, complex problems involving virtualization drivers. So for that, there's more tools that uh, Libbird and QMU offer. So I'm not going to sp uh, list them out all. But we'll, we'll see uh, first a couple of utilities that Compute offers, and then dive into a few of them um, LibVirt offers as, as an example. And then we'll see an example of a real bug that um, how uh, to troubleshoot or how you track down the root cause. So <coughs> Nova has this um, Guru Meditation Error Report framework. This was introduced by uh, Nova developer Daniel Garanger and Solly Ross, another uh, Nova contributor. So it just um, provides you, um, not just, it does provide you the whole, um, if, if your Nova process is uh, misbehaving, you can say, um, kill, supply a Unix signal called USR1. USR1 and USR2 are your Unix user-defined signals. And say, give the process ID of um, Nova Compute. And then it will um, print out a whole large error, error report on your in, in, in your STD error stream, so it could be redirected to a log or, or probably wherever it is redirected on your Linux distribution. <coughs> From Itaka release onwards, the default uh, signal is USR2 because there's a collision that another pro, um, component, Apache mod WSGI, uses yeah USR1 for its own purposes. So we had to change the signal to um, another user-defined one. So that's the thing which will be the default from Mitaka release onwards. <coughs> so the cool thing about this uh, um, Guru Meditation Error Report framework is th there's no prior action necessary from the administrator. So you can just trivially uh, kill process, um, can be compute, API, or whatever, and then um, all it will print out all kinds of things like configuration details, threads, and package versions, et cetera, et cetera. So you can check out the example error report. You if you can just Google it, 
Guru Meditation or Reports or um, and Nova, so you'll you'll find plenty of them. Okay, since the talks focuses on Libert and QMU, so let's um, see what are the tools that are at our disposal to debug um, virtualization drivers. Most of um, administrators who are dealing day to day with virtual machines would be aware of um, the logs specific to guests in uh, var log libert QMU and it's in the VM log and no instances are really with uh, they're, they're not named as VM1, VM2, is they're in long UUID plus uh, your instance dot logs. So they contain typically the libvirt generated QMU CLI and libvirt standard error stream and any error messages specific from QMU are um, you, you, you'll find them in in the VM dot log um, in guest specific logs in that directory. So it's pretty handy when you're, when you're debugging um, virtualization drivers for the first place to look at. <laughs> Libvirt also offers granular um, logging infrastructure to, to capture error messages from daemon, Libvirt daemon as well as client side. So specifically, um, the Libvirt log filters are, are more useful because you can say, um, I want to capture debug for so and so component and error messages for rest of them all. So that, that, that will um, allow you to capture the areas that you're specifically interested in and ignore the rest. <coughs> so that's um, Libvirt. Uh, you can set the log filters in libvirt d.conf, um, uh, etc. libvirt d.conf. Say, okay, the thing that you see there is log filters. I want all debug information for QMU, libvirt and security. And, and th one stands for debug, and three stands for warning and error. That's just um, uh, code that's used internally. So, and then say, and then say, please redirect all the output to a to a specific log file. So, it you can specify well log libvirt libvirt d just to make it consistent or or anywhere um, of your choice depending on your storage. And don't forget to restart the libvirt daemon, so the change takes effect. What else? Um, Libvirt also has um, API uh, logging that you can set via environment variables. So you can just say, please um, provide, all you can just set this, export this environment variable. So Libvirt will dump all the um, API related logs and all the calls that Libvirt is making um <coughs> on your STD error. And, and also, the nice thing is you can redirect these outputs to two streams, either to your systemd journal or to a file, and, or both together, depending on how you want to set up your logging infrastructure. And that uh, specifying multiple log outputs is applicable for both your um, API logging as well as uh, liver daemon logging. System the journal. System the journal um, is, is, is very useful for debugging um, your system uh, services, and it also has um, in this context, it also has libvirt specific journal fields. So um, it's in, in a structured manner. It throws out all the um, details. Like, so you can, if you're seeing a libvirt specific error, you can you can clearly point to it, it clearly points you to a specific source file, line, function. So it's it's pretty neatly structured that um, you can examine your systemd journal. These are just some of the ex example commands you can say. General, please tell me all ha all priority error errors for Libbert Damon since today. So it's it's very flexible. You can query f to hell and back with various switches, and you can monitor just like tail minus f with classic Sysway. And you, says, you say general CTL Libbert Damon dash f, and you can follow the Libbert Damon uh, related errors. So yeah, feel free to stop me uh, in between um, instead of me just droning on. What else? Um, you can also have um, QME offers uh, the ability to live query your virtual machine, which is exposed um, via libvirt. <coughs> so you QME monitor command and QME monitor event are the two interesting ones. So monitor command allows you to supply any um, QME command via the libvirt shell interface called Versh. So um, so that you can either query the state of a virtual machine or modify the state of it. Um, however, if you modify the state of a virtual machine through QME monitor command, your libvirt warranty will be gone. So you can query 
Um, querying is fine, but if you modify um, the state of a virtual machine, behind, that will be going behind libverts back. So that's only in, the, in, in dire situations you might want to do. <coughs> and monetary event, um, it, it, as the name is self-explanatory, you can monitor all kinds of events, um, specifically the QMU monitor events that, for instance, if you're doing a live um, block migration or live migration, you, you, can, you, can qu you can fire up the QMU monitor command via libvirt's shell interface for a specific Nova instance, and you can see all um, events, whether there are any errors. You can live um, monitor the fine-grained details that of interactions between libvirt and QMU. And there are a lot more utilities if you just query the man page of Versh, the libvirt shell interface. You can see a lot more details there. Yeah, the syntax is that um, for monitor command. There's also much more uh, easier or, or simpler one instead of writing the JSON. That's a JSON um, uh, syntax that you see there. But um, the there's two um, ways to supply commands. There is a human monitor protocol, and then there's QMP. But the HMP, the human monitor protocol, is being deprecated. So um, this is the QMP is what also is used under the hood by libvirt. So this is what I kind of train myself to get used to. It's also easier to remember because you can map, uh, if you do it enough, that you can, you can map what commands libvirt is sending to QMU. <coughs> so you can also use the more, you can, if, you, if you query the man page, you can see more details of what, what, what's possible um, what syntax. So the command that's just saying that please um, ex execute the query commands, QMU command, that will enumerate all possible commands that QMU supports on your shell interface. So you can see, okay, it supports all these kind of commands. Let me see what's interesting to me. And then you can see if it's relevant to the problem you're debugging and then invoke it. So query commands, that's just a small output. That's a truncated output. There are about 125 commands. You're not enumerating all. I just um, listed four of them. Two of them are query commands, and, two, and the rest of the two are modifying the state of a virtual machine. Um, so the dry mirror that's, 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 that you see there, we'll get back to it um, when we see an example at the end tying up all things that we've seen so far. That's useful for doing things like continuous disk replication or live storage migration. When you do a live block migration in Nova, that's the underlying primitive used in QMU. <coughs> And at the top, you see query events. So you can see, uh, tell me, QM me what are all the events that are supported. So you can see the events there. So there's a lot more things. When you run that command um, on your, on your um, Nova in compute node, you can see what, 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 what are all the possible options. Yeah, and one other one, query block. Um, this will just enumerate all the details about the block devices involved in your um, on your virtual machine. So if you have a Nova instance, you can see all the details, like what is the backing file of your Nova instance, where, uh, w what are the I.O. operations, what is the state of, um, if, if there are any I.O. ops in progress, it will enumerate those kind of details. So I truncated a lot of output just to make it a bit um, clear. So you can see the virtual size of the actual Nova instance, and if there are any backing files involved in it. Um, there are involved usually. Um, you can see the details of that as well. Yeah, the monitor event, uh, for instance, I was just saying that you can say live mi block migration is one of the um, frequently used utilities um, or, or operations in, in, in your OpenStack um, environment. So you can say, please um, print out in a loop all the events that are happening, monitor events that are happening for a specific Nova instance. So you can, you can see that um, via this command. So we, we quickly ran through lo lots of different tools that are available. There's a lot more that um, we can talk about, but I mean, it, it's not really interesting to do enumerate all of them. So let's see a small example of um, tracing the flow of a live block migration from Nova and, and, and where we end up um, with that. First, why this example? In a non-trivial OpenStack environment, like I said, we have, um, you have two compute instances at least. Say you have two compute nodes involved. So two compute instances, 
two QMU instances and two libvirt instances. So you can examine operations between um, both um, source and the destination and see all the interactions and if there are any errors and a whole lot of uh, detailed information um, that you can monitor. So I thought this is um, a cool example. While, while I was making these slides, I stumbled upon a real bug. So I thought, why not um, try the same one um, as an example? So. That's the small syntax that you use when you want to do um, a live blo block migration. You say, no, well, I migrate, um, block migrate for this VM to this destination. So block migrate essentially means it, it will also, along with your w virtual machine's memory, it will also copy the disks as well to the source. So when you invoke that, Nova's libvirt driver sets a bunch of flags. By default, there are some set flags set, but you can modify them if you know um, how live migration works or in, um, in at, a, at a more advanced level or if you know um, the details of it or want to do something specific you can still supply flags as well. So, but um, there are defaults and you can configure them still. <coughs> so, what happens uh, when you invoke the Nova block migration? This is what um, the, the command that you see on the screen is what libvirt um, is invoking under the hood. Um, Nova's virtualization driver is essentially making calls to this infrastructure. So this is just a um, wrapper shell um, versh libvirt shell command, what it looks like, the, the same one we saw before. If you have to invoke it directly with libvirt shell, that's, that's what it turns out to be. So um, I didn't show um, the output of um, the command when you run. It's just, it just prints out um, details of the block migration but that's not really interesting to see. <coughs> so yes, um, that's the command um, uh, that um, Nova is calling out under, under the hood, the, uh, Nova's libvirt drivers making calls. And what happens when you run that? So when you run that, apparently there is an internal error and guests unexpectedly quit. That's pretty nasty. If you, have, um, if you have a database or something running inside it, I mean, this is a disaster. But it's not really a helpful message. Internal error doesn't mean anything. I mean, it might, it, it, it's not helpful any, at all. So let's see what, what else we can see. That's, a sta that's what standard error says for now when you invoke that live block migration command. Like um, we've seen, guest specific logs are located in while log libvirt. So there's a couple more errors there. Again, the internal error, it doesn't mean anything. What's an internal error? So and we go further down, I truncated some output there, and libvirt assumes the guest crashed, but we don't know if it's true or not. So let's see uh, if we can find out um, if the assumption is right or not. So we've seen the error from libvirt. So next, libvirt calls to QMU. Let's check out what's the QMU error. The QMU specific um, log is where log libvirt QMU VM1. Well, like I said, VM1 is not a typical name of uh, Nova instance, um, but that's just to keep it brief, I mentioned it as VM1. And it says a cryptic error message, Coroutine entered recursively, and the guest is shutting down. So we, we now know that at least QMU also thinks the guest, knows the guest is shut down. What else? Since Libra assumed the guest crashed, we can use tools like system decoredum CTL to see if there are any cordums or stack traces specific to QMU process. So you say cordum CTL, and there you see a, <coughs> a process associated with uh, QMU binary. So libvirt assumption is confirmed that um, there is a, um, indeed, uh, uh, a crash. So you can query the cordum CTL tool to provide more detail about the specific crash or event that it uh, logged. So it, it, it can enumerate the stack traces if you have the respective debug packages in, installed. You could see a lot more detail. So this is just an example that you can either, if you have the respective knowledge involved, you can either fix it or report the bug to um, QMU component for your respective distribution. And what does the root cause? It turns out to be a, um, a, a regression in the guts of QMU um, disk mirroring code. So that's fixed by that commit that you see there. So it's just a small example of how you can track down a, a problem um, occurring from Nova all the way to, to QMU. 
I think um, earlier I mentioned that this is VM's lock, but what we saw, the first message, the assumption that you saw, that's from the Wurtz daemon lock, that we've seen lock filters configured earlier, that's what we see. I erroneously mentioned it as a virtual machine's lock, but this is the daemon lock, as you must have seen the name. So yeah, that's, that's a small example um, that, um, that you can see. So there are more, um, you can, you can, you can, examine when you see the man pages for Libvirt's um, Wershell or, or uh, Kumu source has also some of the documentation, but it's more uh, low level, so if you're interested in that area. For KVM, we, we, have, uh, we don't have that much time. So for KVM, there is um, fortunately a good talk by um, another QMU developer uh, um, at FOSTEM early this year. Um, if you're interested in KVM virtualization, I would recommend you to check that out. It's a, it's a very good talk. And also there was another one at earlier this year, and this month, the last couple of months ago, at KVM Forum um, by David Hildenbrand on um, guest debugging in, in KVM. That also goes pretty low level um, in KVM and kernel. So if you're interested in that area, I would recommend that talk as well. How much time have we got? Yeah, and I just got one more slide, and that, that just shows the, the, the previous example we saw was an error case, um, so th the guest crashed, but in a successful case, you would see a proper, um, you can see the interactions between both source and the destination, um, liver daemons, for instance, I was, what you see on the slide is I'm just grabbing for what commands Libvirt is sending to the destination, the source, what, what commands the source Libvirt daemon is sending to the destination node. So you can see the dry mirror command. We've seen it earlier. I don't know if you're paying attention. Um, you can see the dry mirror command, which is used for storage replication, storage, uh, live storage migration. And y you don't need um, a shade storage setup with this. That's a nice thing with this. Um, so you can just do um, um, a live uh, storage migration or keep on doing the continuous replication as long as you want, and then you can terminate gracefully. So that's the command you can see that source Libvirt daemon is asking QMU to execute. So vice versa, you can also observe the daemon logs of um, uh, or s destination Libvirt daemon and see what interactions are going on there. So that's, uh, that's about it. Um, if you have uh, any questions, then So you want to track the uh, I.O. details from inside the VM to all the way to host? Yes, there is a domain block stat um, command for um, libvirt that, that, that you can see the block statistics um, of, of, of a guest. So there is a command and it maps to a respective QMU command also called block statistics or something. I don't recall at the moment, but yes, there is um, a mechanism for that. You, if you just do a man wash and then query for block and you can see block stats, DOM BLK stat, I guess. So yes, there is um, that. And there are more tools as well. Um, there is a nice page um, that I saw on lwn.net or one of these sites where it enumerates all kinds of tools at different layers of, uh, of stack that you can observe. So yes, that's one thing that, that comes to mind immediately. Any other? Can't see, it's, it's, it's too bright here. So I'm wondering if there's anything. Where's that? Yep. Lifecycle events of um, like guest shutdown. Yeah. Yes, yes, there, there's lifecycle. When you do QMU monitor events, you will see a bunch of um, events related to guest lifecycle. Yes, guest lifecycle events are supported. You can see the events related to that. So when you run that, the you say verse QMU monitor command for a, in for a Nova instance in a loop. So you can see if you shut down the guest, it will, it will um, enumerate the details of guest events. So say that again? Can I see, can I see 
Well, I think that comes down to Nova, I guess. It, it's, it, uh, you can see what commands that are passed to QMU from libvirt. So if, if a higher layer tool initiated the, the event, then you have to use an external tool, I guess. Does that answer you? Well, at, at this, at, yeah, if, if, if it depends what you're who, what is triggering. You have any external scripts or tools handling your uh, your virtual machines? So it depends on what kinds of um, external tools you have, and what is triggering at libvirt and QMU level. I think this is what you can see that you can see that um, lifecycle events are happening. What is triggering an external tool? I think it depends on your deployment environment. So wh what's involved in it? Um, Anything else? All right then, um, thank you.